Hey everybody, welcome back to our fourth part in our four-part series on the types of private practice owners. I am a physical therapist and have been for some 29 years, believe it or not. Graduated in 92 and as you know, working as a practice coach through uh, Meg Academy and helping people achieve success in billing through our Meg Billing Solutions and our credentialing all under the umbrella of Meg Business Management, I have come to realize in my thousands of interactions of literally thousands, because I've been in over 500 offices throughout the US um, from Maine to, to Alaska, honestly, I've come to realize that there are four different types of owners. Now I shot several uh, videos over the past few weeks on the innocent owner, the caregiver owner, and the know-it-all owner. So if you haven't caught those, please go back and catch those. Today, I am talking about the pinnacle, the absolute best of the best, the one that we're always trying to develop out of any PT who's going into private practice, and that is the go-getter owner. Go-getter. You embark upon an entirely new journey when you decide to become a physical therapy practice owner. Just because you're a good clinician doesn't mean you're gonna be a good CEO, billing manager, personnel manager, recruiting officer, compliance officer, marketing director, and the list goes on. And this has been the struggle for decades and probably for decades to come, that we become very good in our craft and then we make this general assumption that we're gonna be great at what we're doing and running others and managing others and developing others within the business structure of our craft. Well, the go-getter owner doesn't see it like that. They're like, hey, I went to school, I became a very good therapist, I've applied my skills, so I've got a high level of knowledge, I've got a high level of experience, and knowledge with experience equals expertise. So I've developed a level of expertise as a clinician. And then when they go into private practice, they quickly realize, well, wait a minute, I didn't start treating patients and go to school at the same time. So as I was running into things, I was trying to decipher and learn and calculate out what it is I'm seeing so I could best treat it. No, that's not what we did. What we did is we went to four, five, six years of DPT school, became doctors of physical therapy with a very big expansive baseline uh, of knowledge so that we can then go start treating patients, build our experience over time through applying what we've learned. So now you're taking knowledge, applying it as a skill through training that you did in school and apprenticeships and affiliations and so on. And your first three years out of school is actually an extension of that training in my opinion. And you just become an expert clinician. Well, if you're gonna be an expert practice owner and operate in the top 10%, which is why my podcast is called Physical Therapy Private Practice, Secrets of the Top 10%. If you haven't caught it, please do. And if you're enjoying these videos as I'm thinking about it, because I never do think about promoting them, click the subscribe button, click the like button. It really helps the algorithm. It helps me a lot to help more people get this knowledge, get this information. But if you really want to be back on track, if you really want to be that very successful private practice owner in the top 10%, it's because you're going to invest in you literally the cost of 12 patients maybe on average right the investment of 12 patients start to finish investing it in you your management team and those around you because obviously you're not going to do this alone you've got to make employees good employees you've got to make good managers and directors and uh supervisors good management team right as well as you being a good leader and manager and entrepreneur yourself that is the three characteristics you have to develop if you invest in yourself prior to opening up your doors in private practice, you will have so much in your hands, so much under your belt. You will have such a great advantage so that when you are building that practice in those first three years, employee one, employee two, employee five, employee seven, employee eight, as you're growing, you're going to do it in the right sequence. You're going to do it at the right time. You're not going to get upside down in your payroll because you're going to understand the complement. You're going to understand the production center formula. You're going to understand GI divided by staff and what percent of gross income should your payroll be on a month to month basis. These are basic principles that you will have to be measuring your performance and then you will have strategies through strat planning and management action planning. You're gonna have the strategies and the tools to actually do something about it. Too many people in private practice either A, aren't running any statistics, B, don't know any metrics or benchmarks, or C, have it and they don't know what to do about it. Maybe that's you, maybe that's not you. 
If it is you and you're measuring things for the sake of measuring things or you're measuring things just to look at them each week but you don't do anything different in the upcoming week because of it, you need to get the skills and the training to enhance yourself as an expert CEO and private practice owner. Because far too many of you that are watching me right now and listening to this video often go to work as a therapist who happens to be a practice owner. And I need to change that mindset. I need to get you to flip that around and be that practice owner, be the CEO, who, oh, who happens to have a PT degree. See, the go-getter owner goes after the areas that they don't have the highest level of competence in, the highest level of knowledge, or more importantly, very easily to measure, the highest level of certainty. Many people are willing to kid themselves and fake it till they make it. But I'm telling you, you have people coming in who are paying their mortgage, paying their rent, paying their car payments, putting food on the table because they are confident that you are making the decisions in the best interest of their well-being as well as your well-being and the future of your practice. Don't take that lightly. Take it sincerely and genuinely and apply yourself at the moment in time that you've made the decision that you want to go into private practice. Apply some money and time into yourself to develop yourself as a private practice owner expert. And it can't be books and podcasts and YouTube videos. It, that's enlightenment. It's just going to give you food for thought. You need an organized, what I consider a learning management system, an LMS, that is going to be rigorous in giving you quizzes, assignments, role plays, and live coaching so that you have someone to talk to. You, and we have a whole community in our Slack channel of hundreds of owners around the country. You can throw any questions you want in there and people are gonna answer them for you. This is what I want for you. This is why I shoot these videos. I, I can't be more straight up with you and genuine and sincere. I struggled when I opened up my first clinic. I started in the third bedroom of my house, then took over my basement, then I opened up a 2100 square foot office down the street, and then I opened, sorry about the blurriness, I, can't move my arm so much it makes the camera go crazy then I opened my second office and I tanked I totally tanked because I was spending so much money on con ed becoming a better therapist I was not investing in my abilities as a better owner and CEO and my family suffered and I suffered and I lost a lot of employees who suffered and uh, just a naive decision and I told myself at that time I remember distinctly 2002 2003 um, 2003, I started getting my training. It was 2002. And I remember putting my head in my hands and I said to myself, I would pay anybody anything if they could come in here and show me how to do this right. It would just save me so much time, energy, and effort if I could just have a mentor who could literally show me the right ways to do it. Not the way they did it. That's the one thing I don't do. I don't just show you what I did. I traveled around this country for 10 years, 150 days a year on an airplane. I've been in and out of 500 clinics. We won practice of the year in 2011. I'm going to show you what the secrets of the top 10% are. What everyone else who's really doing well has already figured out. There's no reinventing the wheel here. There's some evolution and there's some innovation. And I'm going to share with some of those things with you too. We're always doing that. But the five division organization structure, standard operating procedures, a solid policy and procedure manual, and a compliance program... Those things are bread and butter. Those things are solid and concrete. You have to, have to have those under your belt if you're going to succeed and do this right and be ethical and have high personal integrity. So if you like what you hear and you're a go-getter and you're willing to invest in yourself, time and money, and you want to build the absolute best practice, maybe it's one office, maybe it's three, maybe it's 53, I don't know, then invest in getting that coach and mentor and that organizational support so that you don't spend more time and money wasting time on things that don't work. So that's it, everybody. I hope you enjoy this. Be a go-getter. Get out there and learn how to be the best CEO you can be. Start every day expecting to do well, as I do and all of our clients. Congratulations. Take care, everyone. This has been fun. I hope you enjoyed it.